He's a social psychologist at New York University's Stern School of Business and co-author of the New York Times bestseller, The Coddling of the American Mind, How Good Intentions and Bad Ideas Are Setting Up a Generation for Failure, Jonathan Haidt. Jonathan. Okay. Great to have you, sir. Okay. And let's get right to this and see how this all folds in together. Now, the last thing we need in this country is another reason for democracy to be threatened. But your book says <laughs> we have one. It's the darn kids today. Uh, explain that a little. I'm paraphrasing. You're an actual eminent professor. You say it in better words than I just did, please. Sure. Well, um, the, the book has its origins in uh, an observation from my co-author, Greg Lukianoff. He is the president of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, defends free speech rights on campus. And in 2013, Greg began noticing that for the first time, it was the students who were asking for protections from words and books and ideas and speakers. Previously, students had protested speakers before, but they'd never before medicalized it. They acted as though if mm. this person says something, I will be harmed, damaged, people will be traumatized. And so this was something new. And when they put it in terms of safety, well, then administrators have to respond. Uh, so this came in around 2013, 2014, and it brought with it a whole package of innovations, you might say, microaggression training, safe spaces, trigger warnings. All this stuff appears from out of nowhere around 2013, 2014. That's something I did not realize until I was reading your book. I thought it went back further, because I've been talking about the fragile stuff for a long time, but I didn't realize that this is a new generation. The millennials mm -hmm. stop at 1995, that, 1994, that's right. Okay, so now we're into the iGen, you call mm -hmm. them, or Generation Z? Right, same thing, that's right. And yeah. they're even more fragile. Yeah. Well, th so this is something that... Who can yeah. we blame? <laughs> let's so, start blaming. I want to blame. Let's play, let's play the blame game. Okay. I say well, parents. Let's see, you let's, go. Okay, we'll do, all, we'll do all the parents and we'll do all the, all oh, the teachers. So, yeah, the basic, the basic uh, finding, which I think surprised a lot of us, a lot of us assumed that the millennials were from 1982 to around 2000 or 1998. But kids born around 1995 had a very different childhood from kids born a few years before. Um, and so research by Gene, uh, uh, Gene Twenge and others show that kids born after 1985, they don't get driver's licenses as much. They don't drink as much. They don't go out on dates. They don't have sex as much. What are they doing? They're sitting at home on their devices talking with each other. And this seems to be changing social development. And we know this. It, it, this is not just some you know, perception from outsiders. Because the rates of anxiety disorders uh, depression, self-cutting, where they, they have to be admitted to hospitals, um, and suicide. All of these rates are way, way up, especially for girls, and it all begins right around 2011. And so it's when this generation first enters college campuses in 2013, that's when all the, this new attitude about speech comes in. Isn't another reason that they're sitting home instead of doing all those fun things is because the parents insist on watching them all the time. Exactly. I That's mean, we right. talk. I remember uh, 20 years ago, we talked about helicopter parents, you know, yeah. hovering over them. And now they call it a uh, bulldozer mm -hmm. parenting. Yep, yep. They uh, clear out any obstacles yep, in the concierge way. Concierge parenting, I've heard. Right. Yeah. So that the kid doesn't have to ever face any difficulties. How can that kid function yeah. in the real world? That's right. So, so the, the most important psychological idea in the book is anti-fragility. That there are some things that are fragile, like a wine glass. If you knock it over, it breaks. Nothing good happens. If, if something is plastic, you knock it over, it doesn't get damaged, but it doesn't get better. But there are some things that have to be stressed or challenged, like the immune system. If you protect your kid's immune system, right. use bacterial wipes, you're actually hurting the kid. You're preventing the system from getting the information right. it needs. Same thing with social life. If you protect your kids from being excluded, from being insulted, from being teased, when they grow up, it's like the princess and the pea, a little tiny thing that they encounter on campus now becomes intolerably painful. But it's not all over the country, really, right. is it? I mean, it's in, well, it, this is something when they talk about elites. This is who we're talking about, I think, a little more... Yeah. And the heartland. Well, you know, so, the, so the kids who are, fuck yeah. you, mom. <laughs> you know, I call them the fuck you, mom generation. Now, I mean, you, New York too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. calling mom a bitch, turning their back on when their mother's talking. If I did that, I would not be sitting here today. <laughs> and also, the, the, you know, the constant negotiating with the, with the kids. You know, hey, buddy. Yeah. Ready to go? Yeah. You know, just, yeah. That's right. That's right. Kids, kids need structure and authority, and when parents try too yes. hard to be their friends, 
Yeah, but, but on the point about whether this is everywhere, so this is such a new trend. We only began to notice these things in the last couple of years. But what seems to be the case is that the, the anxiety and depression, the fragility, the mental illness, that's across the country, across social classes, across races. And that's why uh, social media use is beginning early, beginning in middle school. That seems to be the most likely culprit of several culprits. So that's all over the country. But the, the, the shout-downs, the, the screaming at professors, yes. we've mapped that out. That is almost only in the Northeast and just the coastal strip of the West Coast and a little bit in Chicago. But that's what gets the headlines, and that's what dominates media. The, see, it's the kid who's screaming at the professor right. who then gets a job at the Huffington Post. Mm -hmm. That's right. And provides fodder for, the, for right-wing exactly. media to and, say, look how terrible And the, the problem are. with liberals in general is that they let those kids who are at the Huffington Post or whatever writing their insane woke shit... <laughs> here, here. They let them control the debate, just like the parents let the kid control when we're leaving. Yeah. We've let the kids take over. Mm -hmm. That's like yeah. job one that's you right. don't do in civilizations. Yeah. No, that's right. There is... You respect <laughs> the elders. That's like every yeah. civilization before yeah. this one, because they <laughs> might be wiser. But, um... Could I... To, to connect it to this point of why we lose, I think that's relevant. I think people in this country don't anymore pay attention to policy so much. It's more this personal stuff. It's anecdotal. I don't know about global warming or what causes a, a recession. But, you know, I saw that mother at the soccer game or in the supermarket, and her five-year-old was screaming at her, and she was apologizing to the five-year-old. I'm not going to let those people take over the country. Mm -hmm. and I, and I think that's the level and, it works on. And to, give, and, to give Donald, and to give Donald Trump his due, I think he understands that because he's a guy who thinks that global warming is a Chinese hoax, but he knows how to attach derogatory nicknames to people, and that's a lot of his success in politics. Yes. Does, yes. The sanitization of the social media sites, you know, you have... Mm -hmm. A kid puts beautiful pictures of himself on the site, and then another kid looks at it and feels that their life is less than mm -hmm. that right. beautiful sanitization. Is that affecting them as well and yes. creating a lot of this anxiety? Absolutely. And that's probably the main reason why it's affecting the girls so much more than the boys. Because if you, if you imagine you know, all of the kids in America uh, around 2007 to 2009, and you suddenly just drop millions and millions of iPhones all over the country and kids pick them up, what are the boys going to do? Oh, video games. And it turns out, actually, video games aren't that harmful. Especially... And porn. Well... <laughs> no, really. <laughs> and that's not a joke. Yeah, motorboating. That is... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but, but, wait, but just to, to finish up here, uh, so the boys are mostly doing video games, which aren't so bad. Um, even if they're running around imaginary worlds killing people, as my son does with his friends, it's really cooperative, there's teamwork, they're talking. <laughs> but, but what the girls are doing... <laughs> What the girls are doing is putting something out and then waiting anxiously while people comment on it. Right. And so it's, it's the social comparison, it's the fear of missing out. Um, also, girls' bullying is relational, boys' bullying is physical, so social media doesn't really affect right. it. But girls can never get away if they're being bullied. So this is why we think the, the, uh, the suicide rate is up 25% for boys, but it's up 70% no, for girls. Terrible. Okay.